Climate shocks and disasters compromise lives, livelihoods and development gains, with vulnerable communities experiencing these impacts the worst. The Insure Resilience Global Partnership, initiated and led by the G20 and the Vulnerable Group of 20, brings together a wide range of stakeholders to strengthen the financial resilience of states and individuals in developing countries. Guided by its Vision 2025, the partnership enables faster, more reliable and cost-effective responses through climate and disaster risk finance and insurance solutions, shifting from reactive crisis management to proactive risk management. Excellencies, welcome to this year's annual report of the V20 G20 Insure Resilience Global Partnership. My name is Alfred Alfred Jr. I am the Minister of Finance for the Republic of the Marshall Island and currently V20 co-chair of the partnership's high-level consultative group. A warm welcome. My name is Maria Flaxbart. I am Parliamentary State Secretary to the German Federal Minister for Economic Cooperation and Development. I co-chair the Insure Resilience Global Partnership on behalf of the G20 Plus members. In 2020, we have seen hard-won development gains being undermined or reserved by the COVID-19 pandemic. This additional burden came on top of climate change-related shocks and disasters. Strengthening financial resilience is key to empowering states and communities to handle these crises and to build back better. One of Germany's first responses to the COVID-19 outbreak was to finance premium payments for the African risk capacity amounting to 19 million euros. This enabled African countries to ensure poor and vulnerable people against climate risks despite the pandemic. Up to 20 million vulnerable people will have financial protection against extreme weather events like droughts and cyclones this season and upcoming agricultural seasons. Despite all the progress made scaling up climate and disaster risk finance and insurance solutions in vulnerable countries remains an ambitious task requiring closely coordinated actions. The Insure Resilience Global Partnership was called to into being in 2017 as a joint effort by G20 and V20 countries. Today, more than 80 members have united behind one vision to strengthen the financial resilience of vulnerable communities against climate risks. In September 2020, our partnership high-level consultative group established important strategic directions for the scope of future work by the partnership. Against the backdrop of the pandemic, we decided that the partnership should also address pandemic risks and other compound risks when they are connected to climate change related shocks. However, as climate change continues to progress, the partnership will still maintain its focus on climate and disaster related risks. Also, we endorsed a declaration on gender that we will guide our members in pursuing gender-responsive approaches in their work. And we decided to drive forward the systemic integration of risk finance into in international adaptation planning, for example, into countries' updates of their nationally determined contributions under the Paris Agreement. The COVID-19 crisis has reminded us of the fact that we need to accelerate adaptation action and build our adaptive capacities. Not only through risk finance mechanism, but through shifting public and private finance toward resilience investment. This year's key achievement was the partnership's endorsement of the action areas on integrating risk financing considerations into national adaptation planning in the context of adaptation plans and 
the indices of the Paris Agreement. This can offer benefit beyond financial protection through detecting and pricing risk. Risk finance can also help to make sound economic sense of public and private resilience investment and thereby deliver on the Paris Agreement. The partnership also continues to support the V20-led Sustainable Insurance Facility, the SIF, which seeks to enhance MSME's access to climate-smart insurance products. This is more urgent than ever, given how badly affected our MSMEs are by the pandemic. After having kicked off the work of the SIF last year during the Marshall Islands presidency of the V20, we have now begun moving toward preparatory implementation in the Philippines and the Pacific. But we all need to push ourselves to move faster with resources to urgently reach small businesses and the poor and vulnerable people who depend on them. Lastly, we would like to highlight the AGLCG's deliberation on sustainable premium financing from our first meeting in Katowice in 2018. G20 countries such as, as uh, Germany, in the context of ARC this year, have shown sensitivity to the situation. And going forward, reliable and pre-agreed mechanisms that build on solidarity within and between the V20 and the G20 countries are key in continuing our joint quest to enhance resilience and protect the poor and the vulnerable. For one, more ambitious NDCs are pivotal for this quest. We must stay on track and update our NDCs. Even the best disaster risk financing will not be able to manage a beyond two degree or warmer world. It is critical that we safeguard the 1.5 degree limit beyond which the Marshall Islands and many communities around the world would not survive. Secondly, at the Climate Adaptation Summit, global leaders need to mobilize political support to accelerate policy and finance cooperation. In 2021, we need more commitment from the private sector, given the strain COVID-19 has put on government budgets. Multilateral institutions can support a menu of instruments such as the V20's accelerated financing mechanism to de-risk private resilience investment. The partnership can harness its convening power to deliver strong public-private partnerships to build impactful protection system through our climate prosperity plans. These need to support the local economy and especially MSMEs through the delivery of the SIF with committed resources. Thirdly, the V20 IMF ministerial plan for in January 2021 will show whether the multilateral system is able to deliver an action plan that enables V20 countries to emerge resilient to climate change. Before and after the ministerial, the partnership and specifically its member from the risk industry, can support this process by providing the risk analytics necessary to promote the disclosure and management of climate-related financial risk and by driving new investment for a transformational decade of climate resilient action. January's Climate Adaptation Summit will set the tone for the year. Much more ambitious action is needed on adaptation and building resilience. Our interresilient partnership will have an important role in this. We will need to focus particularly on the needs of the poorest and most vulnerable. 
And we need to advocate for stronger preparedness to deal with climate risks and for taking into account compound risk. Over the course of 2021 and in the run-up to COP26, implementing the strategic directions of the partnership needs to be a priority for us. I would like to highlight two examples. First, there is a tripartite agreement between UNDP, the Insurance Development Forum and Germany, which will advance innovative risk financing solutions in partner countries. In September 2020, the first tripartite project was officially launched offering insurance for public schools in Peru. The second example I would like to mention is a natural disaster fund. The NDF is an innovative paramedic mechanism providing indirect insurance protection against climate and disaster risks. With UK and German funding, public and private insurance actors will jointly develop insurance products for the local communities, cities or humanitarian organizations. Now that it is five years since the Inter-Resilient Global Partnership came to existence, we have another five years to achieve our Vision 2025. Next year, it will be crucial that we get more projects up and running on the ground and that we expand to additional countries and that we engage in further capacity building. I'm confident that we will deliver on our Vision 2025 if we continue to combine our focus and further broaden and deepen our contributions. Let us do what it takes. The Insure Resilience Annual Report 2020 is available in an online format. Please follow this link.